This is the Bourneville Cadbury Museum, which tells you everything about the creation of the suburb and the vision behind it. Known as a factory in the garden, Bourneville was an innovative concept in work and lifestyle. Here, Cadbury workers and Bourneville residents lived out the vision of George and Richard Cadbury, who placed the highest premium on the well-being of individuals and families. Birmingham population grew tremendously during the second part of the 19th century as people came to the city of a thousand trades to find work. A lack of suitable, well-built rental housing meant the huge influx of settlers had to live in poorly built back-to-back -back houses. These houses were only one room deep, with just a thin back wall between the adjacent row of houses which faced into an inner courtyard. The back-to-back -back houses had no gardens, but courtyards with a communal water pump, dry toilets and a washing area. George Cadbury was a keen supporter of the Temperance Society, which was a social movement against the consumption of alcohol. And George made the connection between poverty and pub and to this very day, there are no public houses within Bourneville. In 1878, George and Richard Cadbury moved their chocolate making business out of the city centre into the countryside. This allowed the business to expand and houses for the key workers were built on land close to the factory. In 1892, George Cadbury bought more land next to the factory to build decent housing for the working class. In 1894, he appointed a 20-year-old architect unknown at the time to design the estate. His name was William Alexander Harvey. His distinctive designs gave the village his unique character. The Bourneville Village Trust was founded in 1900, transforming the building estate into a village community. In 1906, a co-partnership called the Bourneville Tenants Limited was set up, with land leased from the trust and each tenant owning a share in the company. The trust built 10 chilling houses, so named after the rent charged. They were also called sunshine homes as they all had large south facing windows to benefit from the sunshine. Richard's umbrella displayed here was often put to good use in bad weather. On rainy and cold nights, 
Richard Cadbury in order that the women workers should not have to wait in the rain and cold, used himself to stand outside and when the train was signaled, blow a whistle so that the women had only to run straight from the dressing room to the train. Sports and recreation have always been central to life at Cadbury. Swimming was particularly popular. Young girls who joined the business were taught to swim and competitions were held regularly. As early as 1905, a well-equipped dental department was set up at Bonneville to care for the dental health of staff, especially new employees who often had very poor teeth. Company concern with staff health and well-being continues to this day with a dental service available for all Cadbury employees. Bonneville Factory Tools started in 1902. Outings to Bonneville were advertised on railway station handbills as a tour of the famous works in Garden Village. In 1933, nearly half of the 156,000 visitors shown around the factory were excursions by the railway companies. It has been estimated that from 1902 until the last guided tour in April 1970, some 3,250,000 visitors went around the factory. Female guides were renowned for the chocolate brown uniforms and pillbox hats. Cadbury still runs the factory and life in the village is still overseen by Boonville Village Trust.
We have now reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a like and I shall see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good and you? Very well.